Welcome back to Elden Ring. In this video, we are going through an OP build that doesn't require you to be really far into the game. And this build is better than Comet Azure, it's better than the Sword of Night and Flame. I'm absolutely loving this build since putting it together. And it can be run on any class, however, you're going to need a lot of intelligence, some dexterity, and it's going to be based on magic, which is why this is titled an astrologer build. So the very first thing you are going to want to do is from the first step, you're going to make your way up north all the way over to Gatefront. And before we get any further into the video, if you're not currently subbed to the channel, make sure you do sub turn notifications on. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like. All support is greatly appreciated. And if you want to support me further as a creator, then check out the links in the description. And let's get into it. So from Gatefront, the first thing you are going to want to do... As long as you've interacted with that Site of Grace, you'll have your mount. What you're going to do is head over to the southeast, and over this wall here... You're going to come down these stairs, and when you get to the very bottom, there's going to be a chest. You are going to need to interact with this to get your whetstone knife, so that you can apply Ashes of War to your weapons. From this chest, if we then head up and go east, there will be another Site of Grace just over here. So you can interact with that one, sit down, rest if you need to reset aggro and stuff. But then you're going to carry on over this way. And when you get to this bridge, there will be a boss around here, and there's going to be some enemies. But there will also be a scarab, and you need to destroy this scarab, because you're going to obtain an Ash of War called Determination. So, after obtaining Determination, what you need to do is find a small weapon, preferably like a dagger or something like that, and you need to apply Determination to that. That is going to be your secondary weapon. Then, from Gatefront, make your way up to Stormhill Shack. And this time, instead of skipping the castle, you're going to have to go through the castle. And you are going to need to defeat Godric. After you have defeated Godric, if you haven't been to Lake Face and Cliffs, make your way there. You'll get put into a cutscene, and you'll be taken to the Round Table Hold. So if you go to the bottom left of the map, you can fast travel over to the Table of Lost Grace, which is the Round Table Hold. And when you come here... If you come up these stairs and look over the balcony, but go right, after you've defeated Godric, there's going to be a guy here. And if you talk to this NPC, follow all of the dialogue, do all of the like nice interactions, all that sort of stuff, then you are going to be awarded Rogier's Rapier. It starts at plus 8. I've built it up to plus 20. It is now known as the Cold Rapier, and I've also got a Magic Dagger plus 3. If you are looking for a dagger or something small that doesn't weigh a lot to put some points into, like the level up a few times, and then just put determination on, you can come to the Twin Maiden Husks, which are in the round table hold, and you will be able to purchase a dagger here. There are also a few other weapons. So now we move into Leonia Lake, and we are going up to the Rhea Lucaria Academy. So what I like to do is, from Academy Gate Town... If I put a little beacon around here, you're going to head to this area here. There's going to be a staircase with some enemies. Skip all them. Come onto this little bridge that leads you up here. So from Academy Gate Town, if we head to the beacon we've placed, when you get to the beacon, as I said, make your way up the stairs. And as soon as you get to the very top, Keep following it round, go past the flamethrower turret thing. Then when you are up here, there's going to be a site of grace. So unlock this, then we're going to need to break the seal to actually enter the academy. So from the South Rhea Lucaria gate, if you make your way west now, so come back off the bridge and come over to Temple Quarter... When you arrive at Temple Quarter, there's going to be a massive dragon in your way, but you don't have to fight the dragon. You just need to annoy it so that it flies up into the sky and you can get in behind it. Because when we get over to this rock formation, this is where the dragon would be. And behind it, there's going to be three loot items. And one of them, like I think it's the one that sits on this corpse, one of them will be the key to break that seal and get into the massive academy that's up there. 
So this is where you will be on the map. And then what you need to do when you get into Rhea Lucaria is make your way to Debate Parlor, which is going to be a boss fight. So take down the boss, make your way into Debate Parlor, and we continue from there. So when you are in the Debate Parlor, if we head north out of this door here, we are going to first grab the glintstone wet blade so if you jump up here to your northwest inside this room if you take down this enemy on this corpse here there's going to be the glintstone wet blade but from here if you make your way up these stairs trying to avoid all the attacks jump over this ledge here then there's going to be another enemy at the top of these stairs then you're going to want to jump over here. At this stage, make sure you have a bow with you. If you want to get two masks. Because it all depends on how you want to build it. But if not, it's not hard to get back here. But follow this route. Go up this ladder here. I mean, that's if they don't absolutely ruin me. Uh, leave me alone. So, I mean, if you want to, you can take out that guy that shoots arrows at you. But come all the way along here when you're at the top of the ladder. Okay, that one's very aggressive. What you're going to do is follow this round to the right. And you're going to drop down onto this roof. Then make your way down onto this one. With this, be very careful. You have to run and jump. So, run. When you get to the edge, jump. You're going to make it across to this one. Do the same again onto here. Follow this all the way round. And then you're going to jump down into here. So on your left hand side, drop down. And then down one more floor. And behind you, there will be a crystal crab. That's going to drop the Lazuli Glintstone Crown. Which is the one that I am wearing right now. But then if you drop even further down, all the way to the bottom... When you do get down here, you are fine to drop down this. So, we drop down. If you equip your bow at this point, over here, I can't really describe it. Like, the other side, look at the top of my mask, like the top of my headpiece, where the blue bit is. Right there, through that gap, there's going to be another crystal crab. And that one will drop. I don't actually have it on me. I'll go back to a site of grace and I'll show you which mask that will drop. So, in terms of the masks, I'm currently wearing the Lazuli Glintstone Crown, which will be the one you got from the Crystal Crab inside the tower that you dropped down. With the Astrologer Hood, you'll see my Dexterity goes down to 19, Intelligence goes to 62, and that's from 22 and 65, so I lose 3 on each of those stats. You'll see that with the Astrologer Hood, my health goes up, and it's actually a little bit lighter, but that's the starting hood. So you are using a little bit more equip load. You're losing some health at the cost, or at the conversion of getting three Dexterity and three Intelligence. If you do want to run the Twin Sage, which will be the one you get from the Crystal Crab through the little, like, railing bit, if you want to call it that, outside the tower... You're not going to get any dexterity. You're not going to lose any health. However, you're not going to get as much stamina. But you are going to get an extra 3 intelligence. So basically, this boosts your intelligence by 6. And then the Lazuli one boosts your intelligence and dexterity by 3. At the cost of a little bit of health. So it all depends on your stats. It's entirely up to you how you build this. You are just going to need requirements for the weapons, which are 5 strength and 9 dex for the dagger. And then Rogier's rapier is 17 dex and 8 strength. So now what we're going to do, make sure at this stage you have 2 stone sword keys. You can buy them from the twin maiden husks in the round table hold. Or you can find them as you're exploring the game. But back over to temple quarter. Same again, we're riding north, but you're going to go way past the dragon part. And if you keep heading northeast, so the big rock formation with the dragon is right behind us. You're going to come across these cerulean scarabs. Behind them, this is where you put your stone sword keys in. You're going to make your way into this tunnel. This is going to be the Academy Crystal Cave. 
So from Temple Quarter, you come up past the rock formation where the dragon would be. You head over to your northeast, and you've got Academy Crystal Cave there. What you're going to do in this cave is make your way to the boss fight. So if we come over to the east, just follow the exact route that I take to get there the easiest way. Because there will be some enemies that are going to attack you with magic in here. So just keep following it. There's nothing bad at the start. A couple of rats that won't have enough time to attack you. When you get in here, just keep running and do a 180 on yourself round to the right hand side. You might get hit by a spell or two. But follow this round. You'll see the door. Go through this door here. Ignore these enemies. And come into here to where there will be a boss fight. This boss fight is going to be crystal bosses. In order to deal damage to these, you just need to keep attacking them. If you've got Sword of Night and Flame, anything like that, you can just keep attacking over and over again. They have a crystal armor that you need to break. So the more you attack them, the quicker it breaks. Once it breaks, you can deal maximum damage to them. But take down the bosses and come to the stairs at the back and interact with this lever. And I timed this roughly. This is the biggest elevator I've found in Elden Ring. It takes about 25 seconds to actually come down when you pull the lever. Then when you get to the top, come outside and you are going to climb up this ladder round here. And in this chest in front of you, you are going to have a spell called Terra Magicus. You don't have to use this, but it will boost your magic damage. And what we are going for on this build does scale with magic. This is just one of those optional things. I don't even use it, and you'll see the amount of damage and stuff I'm dealing is like in the whole of Elden Ring is more about upgrading your weapon than it is anything else. If you go from a sword of night and flame, say plus two, up to a sword of night and flame plus eight, it's gonna make all the difference in the world. And Rogier's rapier is upgraded using normal smithing stones, so it goes to plus twenty-five. And that is gonna give you some insane damage. When you see what this currently does for me. Yeah, when you get it up them final five levels, it's going to be mental. It's already more powerful than Comet Azure. It's, it feels more powerful than Sword of Night and Flame even. And I've been running that at plus six for at least 20, 30 hours of gameplay. I've run loads and loads of builds, and this one so far seems to be the most powerful. So what you are going to do from here is, if you come out of the Academy, you come over to the east of the Academy, you're going to see Eastern Leonia Lake Shore. If you follow the road and go all the way up from here, you'll get to Eastern Tableland, and then you just keep coming along. You can go up this way as well if you've unlocked the Church of Vows. Come up here, go to the very top, get to the Ruined Labyrinth, then make your way round here. I can't remember the exact route. I think it might be come round here and climb up. Then you'll see the Mausoleum Compound. So if we fast travel, actually I'll fast travel to Ruined Labyrinth and I'll show you how to get up to the Mausoleum Compound. Instead, what we'll do is we'll do it from the Eastern Tableland, just because there's a little tricky bit, or it might come across as tricky. But we are making our way up to the Minor Earth Tree, because we need to take down another boss. But these are all, like, minor bosses. So if you head over to the west, I'm just grabbing some materials as I do the route. Then when you get to this main path up here... The only major boss you'll have to take down for this is Godric. But you come up to this path here, and you're going to see a split that comes off to the west that will lead you up to the Church of Vows. So that would be over there. And we are here just so you can see the lake and see exactly where we are. We're over here. But carry on north. Ignore the church. Like Grab the Sight of Grace if you don't already have it. But then follow the main path, and what you are going to do is when you get further and further up, you're going to come through here. You do need to be careful at this stage. There will be some enemies that are going to be annoying. But just come round on yourself to the left-hand side, and then you're going to ignore all these, and come across here. That's what I mean. Some of them might hit you. But make your way to this site of grace, and then you can reset all the aggro, so it doesn't really matter too much. And this is the Ruined Labyrinth. I'll show you on the map. It's the Site of Grace that's right here. So from here, what we're going to do is keep heading up north. 
And when you get through this section here, if you head over northwest, you're going to see a massive mausoleum right there. But just keep following this all the way around. Ignore the mausoleum itself. Hug this right-hand wall. And then when you get to this part here, you can climb up here and drop onto here. So right now, you would have gone through this little pond and you'll be at this section right here. So keep making your way up. And then when you get around here, there's another site of grace. That one is the mausoleum compound. Then what you need to do is head north. Ignore this massive mausoleum. Come around to the east. And as soon as you get through this little gap here. Right here. This is the minor Erd tree. You would have an Erd tree avatar boss here. Once you take this guy down, you are going to get three different tiers for your Flask of Wondrous Physic. But the main one is that you're going to get the Magic Shrouding Cracked tier. Then if you don't have your Flask of Wondrous Physic at this point, if you come back down to Gatefront and you follow this path all the way round, then you come up and follow it all the way along. When you get to the third church of Marika, you'll have your Flask of Wondrous Physic sat there. Then what you can do if you want to get open line bubble tier, because you can get others. You could even go for the intelligence knot. There are lots of different like tiers you can use in the Flask of Wondrous Physic. It's all entirely up to how you want to play. The Cerulean Hidden tier is all the way up here. So you've got to go way past the lake. So I'm not going to recommend that one. If you want the intelligence knot, if you make your way up the lake to Northern Leonia Lake Shore... Then what you want to do is head down and follow, like hug the left wall, make it all the way to here. There's going to be a pack of wolves. Then if you come around the back, there's going to be a little, I'll, I'll show you quickly, but it is basically up here. You've got to go the bottom way. You have to be level with the lake. So from Northern Leonia Lake Shore, if you head east, make sure you are level with the lake. And then just follow it up northeast and then eventually north until you see the wolves. And right about here is where you will, like on this path here, is where you will see the wolves. You can see one running there. There's a few others. Just ignore them. Come round to the back of this section here. There's going to be some creepy hands around this area. But make your way all the way northeast. And when you get to this section here, there's going to be a big gigantic hand that's just sat under the ground. That if you go this way, it will jump up and it will grab you. So if you use Torrent and you jump up onto here, you'll see right there the fingernail sticking out of the ground. So ignore the little ones, come around the back of this hand, and in here will be your intelligence not crystal tier. That is going to boost your intelligence by 10 for 3 minutes when you use your Flask of Wondrous Physic. So that would be to run the Magic Shrouding Cracked tier and the Intelligence Knot. If you want the Opaline Bubble tier, I don't think you really need it. I'll show you it anyway. But with this, I would say boost your Intelligence and boost your Magic. Because the Opaline Bubble tier will significantly like reduce the amount of damage you take from one hit. It's going to put a bubble around you. If you do want that, you're going to have to head all the way to the very bottom of the map. So from the first step, go east until you get to Dragonburnt Ruins. Follow that around until you get to Agil Lake South. Then come across this bridge that's right here. Come down into the Weeping Peninsula until you get to Castle Morn Rampart. Then head north until you get to south of the Lookout Tower. Then what you're doing from here is when you arrive at south of the Lookout Tower, if you head west, and you're going to come across this bridge. Ignore the enemy that's sitting down by it. Come all the way across. And you are heading over there to the northwest where you can come up onto this cliff over here. So just keep coming all the way round. Then when you make it over to here, you can turn around. And we're going to head up to where this minor earth tree is. So just keep going all the way south. Make your way up here. And when you get to the very top, again with the cracked pots, there is going to be an Erd Tree avatar. If you take this one down, you will get the Opaline bubble tier. 
And then if you go to a site of grace and you mix your flask of wondrous physic, so rest at any site of grace and mix your wondrous physic. I've gone with the magic shroud and cracked tier and the intelligence not crystal tier. But you will have at this stage the opaline bubble tier. So it will significantly negate damage when it's mixed into your flask. And it puts a bubble around you. It lasts for one hit. But it will stop you taking like pretty much any damage at all from that one hit. But with the intelligence not crystal tier, it will boost your intelligence by 10 for 3 minutes. And with the magic shrouding crack tier, it's going to boost your magic attacks at the same time as boosting your intelligence. So I would recommend mixing these two for this build. And then we have the final piece of the puzzle before I show you exactly what it's capable of. And we go back up to the lake, but we're going past the lake up to the manor. But we're not going in the manor, so you don't have to worry about taking down Loretta or anything like that. If you come from Northern Leonia Lake Shore, when you are here, if you just head up north, follow the main path, you can get the map fragment from there. And when you get in this ruins, there's going to be a couple of enemies that come out. And this archway here, there will be a fake wall. So just hit the wall and it will let you come through. Then you are going to come to Road to the Manor. From Road to the Manor, if you actually ride on Torrent all the way towards the Manor, there's going to be some magic stuff that tries attacking you on the way up. But if you stick to this right hand side, you should easily avoid it. I think it's because I've taken Loretta down or something. The magic isn't attacking me. But you're going to head east past the manor instead of going. There is a site of grace at the main gate. So it's, it's right there. You can grab that so you've got another checkpoint. Then head east. And what we are doing is heading all the way over until you get to this section right here. And here you are going to have an invisible scarab moving around. If you stand about here and wait for it to come around this way, it will come towards you and then as long as you smack it, it's going to get destroyed. You are going to get the Ash of War Hoarfrost Stomp. This is where all the power comes into this build and this Ash of War is fucking stupidly powerful. Your armor doesn't matter for this at all. Your talismans are all personal preference. I'll show you exactly what I'm running in a moment. But as long as you've grabbed the whetstone knife or whatever it's called from the gatefront ruins and you grabbed the glintstone wet blade from Rhea Lucaria, then when you come into Ashes of War, with Rogier's cold rapier, it will just be Rogier's rapier. It's going to be plus eight when you start. I recommend getting as many levels in as you can. It's just going to take regular smithing stones. That's the same for both of these weapons. But what you do is go into your Ashes of War and you're going to pick Hoarfrost the Stomp. Pick the cold variant of it and you'll see exactly why you're going to do that in a moment. But that's for Rogier's Rapier. Then if you go to the dagger and you put Determination on it, I chose to do magic. You can do cold, you can do whatever you want. This one doesn't matter too much. However, it's going to scale with magic, so I chose to do magic. You'll see if you go for cold, it's going to cause frost buildup, but we're not interested in that on the dagger itself. We just want the magic scaling, all that sort of stuff. So make sure you've got determination and you've got whole frost stump. So now, if we go into the equipment, you'll see that mine's plus 20, then I've got a plus 3 magic dagger. I am running the Lazuli Glintstone Crown. As I said, this is all going to scale with intelligence, dexterity, and magic. So any of those you can boost is going to help this out even more. I'm running the Lazuli Glintstone Crown. I've got the Black Flame Monk Armor. I've got Radan's Gauntlets, and I've got the Royal Remains Greaves. So I've got a mixture of stuff on. In terms of talismans, I run Radagon Sawsill. I've got Carrion Filigreed Crest which you can purchase from the vendor that sat right next to Road to the Manor, Site of Grace. Then I've got Graven School Talisman, and that is obtained through the Academy itself, Rhea Lucaria. Then I'm running Arsenal Charm Plus One, which will raise my max equip load, but you don't really need to worry too much about that. If you want to, you can take a piece of armor off. 
So these are all personal preference. You can run any mixture of them at all. The only one I'd really recommend is Carrion Filigreed Crest. So if you go back up towards the manor, road to the manor, there's going to be a guy sat right next to the site of grace on the left hand side. I'll show you quickly. So when you arrive at road to the manor, there's going to be a guy sat here. And there's going to be a quest you're going to have to start. I'm still incredibly confused about this because in one of my previous videos for a build... We were talking about the Carian Filigreed Crest, and some people have said, like, different ways of actually getting this to show up. I can't remember how I got this to show up, because it's not there by default, according to a lot of people. The main thing at the moment is everyone saying you have to start a quest with Blyde. You can Google it and try and find out exactly how to do it. I can't tell you, I don't have a clue. I just know that when this is available, purchase it, it's 5k runes. It will lower the FP that's consumed by your skills by 25%. And the thing that makes Horfrost Stomp so good is if we have a look, running the Filigreed Crest, it's got an FP cost of 8. So it's barely using any FP. You'll see on the right hand side, I've got 93 FP. I can use this 11 times and still have 5 FP. However, I would use the Horfrost Stomp 10 times because I used the Termination once. Whereas, because this says 8 FP cost, if I take this off, it goes up to 10. So it's 25% it lowers it by, and it does it for any of your skills. With Radagon Sawsil, you've got to make your way into Kaelid. What it will do is boost 4 of your stats by plus 5, but you're going to take more damage. I believe it's up to 12 or 13% extra. But you've got to make your way to Fort Faroth. There are plenty of guides and stuff on the channel to make your way over there. So now to showcase exactly what it does. I was going to do this at Gatefront, but the enemies are far too weak. And I know these aren't exactly a lot stronger, but you'll see the difference. From base to when I use the Flask of Wondrous Physic, when I use Determination... So, if we go and use the base, I'm going to press my left trigger once, so make sure with this that you have Rogier's Rapier in your right hand and the dagger in your left. So, I'm going to press my left trigger once. It's going to do the stomp, and that's 1,086 damage. So then, if I hold down Y, I press my left bumper to switch over so I can use Determination. Then hold Y, right bumper, and then use Horfrost Stomp. That goes up to 1738. The determination buff will last for, I think it's about 10 seconds, it's not long. But it will give you that huge boost to the damage you're dealing. But when you have both equipped, so you've got two weapons with Ashes of War on. If you hold down Y and press your left bumper, you'll get your left hand out, so you can use that Ash of War. Then if you hold down Y and press your right bumper, you switch to the right one, so you can use that. So now if I rest and I reset them giants, then when we come up here, remember we've got the Intelligence Knot Crystal tier and the Magic Shroud and Crack tier. So if I... I'll do it without Determination first, and then I'll do it with Determination. So if I use my Flask of Wondrous Physic, I pop it. And then we have a look at Horfrost Stomp. That's here for 1318. But then... If I switch over, I use Determination, I switch back, and I use it again. That goes for 2109. And there is a lot of other stuff in this game you can use to make this even better. You'll see with Horfrost Stomp, I've just absolutely ruined that giant. What I'm going to do very quickly is just kill this one. I'm going to get all of his friends to attack me. So you'll see why this is so good. Watch my FP as well. So they're dead straight away. This guy's trying to attack me, so avoid his attack. Boom, he's dead. And I mean, if this guy stops jumping around like an idiot, if I lock onto him, there we go. You're screwed now, mate. There you go. Didn't even need to touch him. So if I come over to all these... Yep. Yep, you're all dead. It's got two phases of attack that it does. And remember, the more you upgrade your rapier, the better this is going to do. And not only that, 
it has like a wide range of attack. But I'm going to show you one more thing quickly before we wrap this up. For any of you that have taken down Mog and you've come to the the bird rune farm that gets you like 3 mil an hour. Instead of doing the bird, if you've got this set up, so bearing in mind my rapier is plus 20, my dagger is plus 3. All I've got to do is come down here to these enemies. So you can do this with the astrologer. Because it's going to kill these little fuckers. And you're going to get a lot of runes. Sometimes you might have to double it up. But it does ruin them. And then when you get down to this lot, watch this. All of them in the one attack. And then I can just avoid this guy. I'll go to the site of grace and start it all again. So if I just quickly fast travel to get up there, watch my runes as well. This is mental. So I've got 101,000 right now. I'm going to run down here. Left side, take these two. Right side, take these two. In the middle, so don't annoy them, but in the middle, aim for them two. Take them. Over on this left side, get these three. And then, all you've got to do after this guy dies, is get these six right here. So just spam it a few times if you need to. And there you go, they're all dead. We go back with fast travel. I'm going to do it one more time just for the fun of it. Because this is fucking amazing. But you'll see that I went up 30,000 runes. And it doesn't take long. So again, two on the left. Two on the right. Two in the middle. These three here, but you have to do it a few times just because of that red one. And then these six. You have the radius on it. Well, mine is... I don't know why that one on the right won't get involved. Okay, he didn't want to go. There we go, you can go like that. And look at that, from 101,000, in about a minute or something, up to 160,000. I, I think it's around 3.6 mil an hour or something like that. So you've got a rune farm chucked into the build. I mean, that's if you've made it to Mog and everything. But it, it's better than the bird, it's a lot more fun. It's a lot more, like, reliable, because that bird can be a pain in the ass sometimes. It's, it's so easy, they've got runes for days now. But with the smithing stones, especially if you're getting the bell bearings and taking them to Twin Maiden Husks, it gets expensive. I think I had to spend like 50, 60 grand on a couple of smithing stones to get the rapier up to plus 20. And now I've got to go all the way to the very like end of the game in order to get it up to plus 25. But that was a look at an insane build that is better than Comet Azure, because Comet Azure it's just like a lock-on thing. And even running Sword of Night and Flame, it's just on one level. This goes up and down stairs, hills, whatever, wherever your enemy is, as long as they're within the range of it, it's going to attack them. It's incredible. And there are more and more builds coming up. If I can improve this, I'll show you what I've done to improve it. But so far, it's amazing. I absolutely love it. You can take down bosses and everything with this. But what we're going to do is wrap the video up there. Let me know your thoughts and stuff in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Yeah.